Did I stat these properly? Oh god, I didn't. Oh, no, I did. Okay. Oh god, I didn't stat these. Oh god. Ah! Anyways! <laughs> I am sorry about the jankness there. One second, let me go ahead and send the server alert. <sighs> Alrighty, I do believe we are live! Greetings, adventurers, and welcome to another episode of Tired DM's The Vibe Corner Campaign... Vibe Corner D&D Destiny Campaign. Today, we are back with another origin module. This time for Arctic Frost, who is another one of the players in the session. For those of you who missed the previous two origin modules, what this is, is basically the beginning of the Guardian's adventure. It is their awakening into the world, and how they deal with said awakening. <laughs> I see that Ark is figuring out Roll20 controls. Uh, European Dead Zone. God, I hope my iPad's 5% will last. Um, I'm not going to be able to look at chat uh, because I would have to tab out and I don't want to have to do that. Dean Dez, public release folder. Be sure he is 3? Yes, be sure he is 3. Alrighty, let me go ahead and undeafen and get Arctic in on this, and we will be ready to roll. Ah, shit, wrong button. Uh, hello. Hello. Hi. Uh, sorry about that, I just had to get some shit set up, and, uh, other than that, Chapter 4 is Cabal. Where the fuck is Elixney? Sorry, I'm scrolling through the fucking... Monster Manual. Wait, hold on. Chapter 6 is taken. Where the fuck is Lexney? Sorry. Um. Hive. Basically. Hey, I found the Lexney chapter. I was just randomly scrolling. As I explained the stream, the origin story is a one on one module to introduce your character to the world. Mm hmm. It is the awakening of your guardian. You have chosen the EDZ as your awakening spot. The e European Dead Zone, or EDZ, is a large swath of Western European countryside dotted with ruined urban and industrial areas. During the cataclysmic events of the collapse, a massive fragment of the Traveler broke off and fell here. Over time, the shards' paracausal energies exerted strange effects upon the land, giving rise to an unearthly dark forest that grew around it. The titanic, cracked half-dome of the shard dominates the horizon from every vantage in the EDZ, and lightning-racked storms constantly swirl around it. It is regarded with a mix of reverence and wariness. Our story begins with a lone little drone amongst a canopy of a great oak forest. Occasionally, it swings down to the floor and scans with a bright blue light, looking for something. And then it finds it. The ghost swells, letting it it'll expand, and bathes a corpse in bright blue light. You awaken, absolutely disoriented and sit up as your vision clears. You don't remember how you got here. Well, wherever here is. Looking around, you behold a quiet, damp woodland, an ancient forest here and there interrupted by fragments of crumbling walls and the remnants of rusted wreckage. The only indication is this used to be anything other than woods. Before you can even begin to get your bearings, you hear a voice. Eyes up, Guardian. What do you do? Uh... I say hi, because that's polite. Hello! And I look around. This strange uh, little ghost just kind of bobs it about chest height. You're flat on your ass. Leaned up against a tree. And I ask what is a drone thing is, and why I don't remember anything. Uh, oh, I got one of the talking ones. That's good. That's good. 
Um, I'm a ghost. Well, not that I found you. I'm your ghost. Uh, a traveler made me to find you and bring you its light. I just realized that probably doesn't make any sense to you. Hmm. You're right, it doesn't. <laughs> and the whole forgetting thing? That's a long story, but you've been dead for quite a while. I feel dead. Well, you shouldn't. That means I put something together wrong. The ghost oh. quickly scans you with a bright blue light again, and you feel a strange ping in the upper left of your chest. Oh, yep, that, that was it. <laughs> that was it. Sorry about that. Uh, weird. There was a nerve that wasn't corrected there. Um, are you okay? Uh, relatively. All right. Where are we? Uh, somewhere we need to get out of very quickly. Um, not friendly territory. Um, further explanation could wait till later. We need to get out of the open. We need to find some shelter. Because it's almost night. Now what? Actually, no, sorry. That, I did not mean to interject this at the end. We can either stay here, because I saw a cave nearby. I could probably take shelter there. There's a highway, another way, uh, I think towards the north. And then there's a village towards the southeast. Where do you want to go? Is this village inhabited? Yes, by people. Uh, let's go to where the people are then. Alrighty. Goes to the east village, village green. Sorry, I have to scroll through the uh this thing. Uh how are you moving? Stealthily or just casual walk? I'm uh, just walking. Alrighty. Spurred on by your ghost, he you gets your feet. And find yourself less shaky than you would have thought. With the first deep breaths of your new life, you start walking towards the forest edge, in the direction your ghost says an old, ruined village sits just outside the woods. You expect your mind to overflow with more questions. Once you start moving towards your goal, a quiet focus settles over you. Your ghost floats along beside you sometimes, or occasionally darts ahead or to the side to examine a cracked rock or fallen log, but mostly, it seems vanished from view, though somehow you can still feel its presence. Hours creep by as you make your way through the forest. By the time you approach the tree line, the sunlight has dwindled away, deepening cracked shadows stretching between the trees. Between the trunks, you cast sight of several low buildings' dim outlines against the twilight sky. Low light is visible through one cracked window, and a wispy thread of smoke trails from a rusty stove pipe chimney. Your ghost blinks in the beam beside your head, looking on with you. Looks like someone's home. It whispers. Careful, there's no telling who it is or how they're disposed towards guests. You mean you don't know who these people are? I... I was scanning. I didn't want to get picked up by any ghost hunters. Or, light forbid, fallen. Well, maybe they're friendly? As soon as you say that, you see a human head peek out from the doorway. Uh, hello? Oh, hello. Uh, and then it sees the ghost of your shoulder. Oh, hello? Uh, something wrong? Uh, we don't get any guardians out here. Sorry. Um... Are you lost? Yeah, yeah, you could say that. <laughs> Is it just you out here? Uh, there's four others. Uh, we've mostly been staying away from the city. The city's in a bit of a, uh... In a bit of a time right now, with the Cabal Alliance, and uh, there's a lot going on, and frankly, I do not trust half of the people in charge. The city? Oh, well, oh, I forgot. Wait, 
You're new, aren't you? I suppose. The lost city. It's not close to here, luckily. Um, but out here, well, this place is basically a dead zone. We don't get many visitors, which is why I was asking if you were lost. Hmm. Uh, sounds like we should make our way to the city, then. Maybe after resting. I'm gonna cricket, by the way. Hmm? I'm gonna do my ghost, by the way. Oh, city, one. yes, 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 we'd have to, mm. let me think about we'd it. have to? I don't have a signal out here, I, I might or might not have forgotten to bring a, uh, signal booster when I went out looking. I think you about went out it. looking for me, specifically? Well, my guardian. Each ghost is biometrically po coded to a specific individual. We don't know who that is. We don't know where they are or when they are. But we have this sense. And mm -hmm. I was following it and found you. Incredible. Holy shit, you uh, are new. <laughs> right. Uh. May we stay the night? We might- we we'll, won't we'll, we'll stay in your hair for very long. Uh, I guess? Uh, there's an old shed out back. Uh, it probably isn't in the best of shape, but... I'll take it. Alrighty. And he points over his shoulder to a, uh... It looks like a rather large outhouse, honestly. Oh, God. <laughs> But, uh, so I'm assuming you're just gonna probably sleep through the night. Hold on, where is, okay. Yes, despite being dead for who knows how long, I'm very sleepy. Ignore this. Oh. Is that, is that good? <laughs> Actually, yes. <laughs> Alrighty. So, night passes without a single incident. You managed to get a full night's sleep, so if you had any abilities, which you don't because you're level 1, they're fully recharged. Um, and you wake up basically on instinct at the crack of dawn. You see, the villagers are also slowly to wake up. There's only five of them. There's the old man that you spoke to, a couple, that's three, and there are two kids. You're assuming that it's probably a multi-generational family mm -hmm. that just left the city, fucked off to the middle of nowhere, and just sat down, <laughs> basically. I can respect it. Can we talk to the other villagers? All of them are very wary towards you. They, as the old man explained, they don't get many visitors out where they are. And the ones that they do get are usually raiding parties. Fallen raiding parties. Uh. The more you talk to them, you start piecing together this idea of what fallen are. These strange, four-armed creatures from outer space. That I have an affinity for electricity and electricity weapons. Alright, kind of freaky. The two young kids that you spoke to speak of them like boogeymen. Like monsters that lurk in the dark. Don't stray too far from the village or the fallen will pick you up and eat you. Kind of deal. But during your conversations, you happen to overhear talk of a broken generator. Mm -hmm. The 
problem is, uh, well, actually, no, not a problem. This is actually a very good thing. There was a radio hooked up to that generator. But as I said, the generator is very much broken, and you'd probably have to fix it. Me, specifically? Well, you're the one who could come back from the dead. Uh, that's fair. Wait, I can come back from the dead? No one told me this. You already died. Well, I, ass I assume that was a one-time thing. As long as we're connected to the Traveler's Light, I can bring you back. One second, I gotta close the door. My auntie's in the blender. <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> Alright. All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. Uh, where were we? Right. Generator, come back from the dead. So, I don't think we can f Can we find many generators out here? Oh, there already is one. It's just broken. We have to fix it somehow. Ah, and you assume I know how to do that. Oh. We can try. Alright. What do we have to do? Your ghost just kind of looks at you like, well, first we gotta find the damn thing. <laughs> okay. Uh, where is this? Are you talking to the villagers? Oh, yeah. Yeah. One of the kids is like, it's over there. Be careful, it's very sharp. It just points to a, uh, basically a house with a roof and part of the second story caved in. And right. on the other half of the second story that's there, as you make your way up the stairs, you see an old portable generator. It looks like an engine with a frame and a cable leading to a box radio. It's rusted the shit, and the generator is smoking a little. But other than that, you think you might be able to salvage it. And this Rolls. is where you start doing some rolls. This is something called a skill challenge. Basically, look at your skills on your sheet, and if you can describe to me how you would use those, you can roll for it. So, for example, using history to determine when this generator was made and how that could impact the repair process or using technology to try and like work things together. As long as you can explain the skill to me and how you are using it, I will let you roll for it. Well, depending on how stupid that explanation is. But again, <laughs> I've had some pretty fucking dumb explanations during skill challenges and I've let them roll for it. So. <laughs> All right. I can try rolling for technology. Alrighty, go ahead and give me a d20 plus your technology bonus, which I believe. I don't think there's any. Uh, roll 20 has a built-in dice roller. If you look over on the left-hand yeah. sidebar, it should be a d20. You just click on that, and then you just add your bonus to it. Well, if you hover over it, it'll show you all the dice, and then just click on d20. Oh, okay. Alrighty, and what, I what is your bonus? Uh, I don't think I have one. Uh, yeah, yeah. alright. That is an 18. That's one out of three. Three dice rolls? Uh, yeah, you have to give me three different skills that you can justify. Oh, skills, okay. Uh, hmm. History, I guess. How are you going to be using history? Uh, to see what happened to this thing, and if I can maybe use it to Fix what happened to it. All right, go ahead and roll. That's twelve. What is your bonus to history? 
Uh, zero. Okay. That's a pass. Me to beats it. And that's um, two out of three. Hmm. Would perception work here? Perception is about passively noticing things in your environment. Investigation is oh, actively okay. looking for things. Though you... Though you could, but... That's... I couldn't hear you there. What is it? Sorry, I was talking about it. Uh, you could possibly roll to see if you pick up on any uh, like damages to the generator, or maybe... Chances of sabotage or whatever. Is that what you want to use perception for? Or... Yeah, I can do that. That's just a suggestion. Alright, go ahead and roll for it. 14. 14 plus 4. Damn, 18. Alrighty. Yeah. As you repair this generator and you keep working on it, you notice more and more signs of sabotage, or at least an attack. You notice deep charred knife marks into the side of it. Scraps of metal strewn around that are definitely not part of the generator. And you realize this thing might have been attacked by the Fallen. Their, you know, knack for electricity and technology, it makes sense. So, Fun. now that you've gotten this thing repaired, you, uh, it sparks to life with a very loud cough of smoke, and then it starts loudly chugging. And you hear the radio crackle to life as well, as it slowly connects to the various channels. This noise catches the attention of one of the nearby kids, who yells and grabs their dad, like, Hey! Hey! The new one fixed it! They fixed it! <laughs> I love the child voice. <laughs> uh, yeah, I sure did. Yeah. The father comes over. He's like, oh, you actually fixed that. Huh. How in the hell? Anyways. I gave him a thumbs up. <laughs> just a th no explanation. Just. <laughs> yeah, I did that. Right. Uh. Well, as a token of gratitude, he takes the gun off of his belt and hands it to you. And this is how you get your hand cannon. Uh, please, take this as well, a token of our gratitude. Oh, sweet. Don't tell the city we're here. We Did like I... living out here. We do not want to go back. <laughs> yeah, alright. Secret safe with me. Alrighty. So, you boot up this radio. It is obviously old, thoroughly battered, and heavily weather-worn, and yet somehow still functional. It sputters to life with a staticky hiss of complaint when you flip the main power switch, and its dials and control interface respond with grudging illumination. Honestly, did not think that would work, your ghost declares. But even so, it doesn't have the range to reach the city. I think our best bet is trying to get other guardians nearby. Gotta be careful, though. We don't want to broadcast our location far and wide. The guardians might not be the only ones listening. Hmm. Alrighty. Is it time we take our leave, then? I need you to make me an intelligence sh uh, technology check. As you try and uh operate this thing. Try to get a number. Oh. Okay, one second. Another oh. 14. Alright, and then I need to find a pen so I can write this down, and also I need to roll that for your ghost as well. Where the fuck did I put this pen? I'm sorry if you can hear clattering. Oh, there it is. Blended in with the desk. Alrighty. So, what was that? A, four a 14. 14? Yeah. Alright. Roll me 3d20. And then I also need to... Alright, so that's a 12, a 20, and a 1. And then I also need to roll a intelligence check for your ghost. I need to remember what your 
ghost's intelligence score is, Dean does. Check sheet. I'm gonna have to boot this up. God damn it, I really should open this before the session. Luckily, it loads pretty quick. Uh. Page six is the ghost sheet, I think. Maybe, possibly. Uh, no, five. All right, the technology of your ghost is a plus five, so that is. Did I already roll the 20? No, I did not. That is on me. That is a 10. That is a failure. All right, so roll me on another d20. So 12, 20, 1, and 16. Well, okay. Two, three. Damn. Okay. The guardian signal is picked up by the ghost of another nearby guardian, who opens a private channel with you. You hear a very staticky voice come through the radio. Oh, no, an operator? Hello? Yeah, hello. Who is this? Uh, I suppose I don't actually have a name yet, but I am another guardian. I'm gonna need proof of that. Uh, I'm a ghost? Uh, is that you saying I'm a ghost? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the energy of someone squinting yeah. comes clear through that radio. Like, you can, they don't say a damn word, but you can tell that they're suspicious of you. You hear someone talking in the background. And then another voice comes through, a lot more feminine. Guardian and Ghost, if that's who you say you are. This is Guardian and Aya, coming by for, uh... What exactly do you need? Uh, just away to the city. You do realize how suspicious you sound, right? Uh, no. <laughs> Very deep intake of breath comes through the radio. Like, bruh. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? No, no, they say that. Bruh has survived through the collapse. <laughs> <laughs> if you can't tell, this is a hunter on the radio. <laughs> oh my gosh. Ready. Um. Can you at least send your coordinates, or have you not figured out how to do that yet? Uh, I don't think so. <sighs> Alright. You just hear more mumbling on the other side of the radio between two voices that you're now realizing is a guardian and their ghost. <sighs> uh. Right. Track the signal. A couple of minutes away by Sparrow. You better not be fallen, or I will shoot you. I assure you, I am not fallen. Understood. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then you hear the line go dead, like, they just straight up hung up on you. <laughs> I am enjoying this so, so much. I need you to know that since you rolled three numbers above ten, you're not getting a combat encounter. I'm sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> Literally, if you had rolled one less above ten, you had a deal. You would have to deal with hostiles. <laughs> but no. No, no, no. You managed to roll a 12, a 20, and a 16. My luck is just too good. Yeah, too your luck good. is very good. Also, the reason why this was so quick because I didn't know how to operate social interaction between you and the rest of the village, so I just basically let you skip that quest. <laughs> you were supposed to have a whole reputation system. But this document is not clear on how that works. <laughs> Anyways. So, after about five or so minutes, you hear the roar of an engine over a hill. 
Uh, I'm so sorry to the villagers. <laughs> they just kind of look at you weird, like, what the hell? And then a second oh guardian just, like, fucking... The, just picture this. There is a sparrow going over the hill, catching so much air that you think it's practically flying. And it lands in a very loud heap in the corner. Like, a corner of a, uh, like a ruined building. Right? And you hear a lot of swearing. <laughs> <laughs> and eventually, an armored figure comes out, dusting themselves and their cloak off. Like, I've had worse landings. Right! Guardian and Ghost, you were the ones on the radio, right? Yeah, hello. I, like, wave. Your ghost pops out and waves a single little fin. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> huh. You were falling. Good to know. Not that I got anything against them, but the ones out here aren't friendly. The ones back in the tower are friendly. What? I think I'm friendly. We'll see when you get to the tower. <laughs> Hopefully you're good with people. Ah. Uh, ghost. Do you know what they are yet? Hunter. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, what does that mean? For one of us. <laughs> the Guardian just spreads their arms wide. And you see this very elaborate, faintly glowing cloak. Just spread out behind them. Or one of us. Is that a good thing? <laughs> well, the Guardians immediately started to warm up. Right. Well, that's good, I guess. As I said, my name's Anaya. I'm one of the scouts out here. Uh, and as soon as Anaya says that she's a scout, you see one of the villagers just fucking book it behind a rock like, you didn't see shit. Oh. You didn't see shit! <laughs> And I kind of looks over your shoulder like, is this one of those refugee situations? I don't want to come back. Yeah, don't worry about it. Don't. You know what? I leave out a lot of shit in my reports. It's just another thing that I'm not going to add. It's fine. It's fine. Probably going to get yelled at by a Cora, but she ain't my vanguard. Ready. Actually, I don't even have a vanguard. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> uh, you said you needed a lift. Yep. In the city. Do you know what the city is? Nope. <laughs> and this guardian bracket, like, their face just splits in half with a smile, like, <laughs> blueberry. <laughs> Did you, what, what did you just call me? I'm not blue or a berry. You're grayish. Right? What kind of blueberries are gray? <sighs> Don't worry about it. Tower slang. Uh, right. And you see her go back into that ruined building where her sparrow crashed. And the sparrow to you looks like this weird amalgamation of metal. Like, it doesn't even look like a vehicle. It's like... A massive piece of rebar with a bunch of jet engines strapped to it. Is, is that safe? Safe enough as long as you don't put your ass near the thrusters. Cool. I've caught so many cloaks on fire that way, but you should be fine as long as you hold it in your hands. Alright. What? Why not? You know what? Why not? So you follow her inside of this ruined building, and you just see that the sparrow is a complete and utter fucking mess. The front of it is on fire, where the engine is literally welded to the piece of rebar, and it is on fire. There is a ghost rapidly spinning around it, just trying to scan and repair it, and just work desperately before it explodes, which it does. <laughs> it does explode. And the ghost just does the ghost equivalent of sighing, and then beams in a new one. Like, oh, fuck. And I, I thought I said, stop blowing these up. I only have so much glimmer to transmit. Yeah, well, pff, I'll handle that later. We'll grab a bunch of bounties from Banshee. You are actually hopeless. 
Well, your rest, Mace, so you're stuck with me. <laughs> Two of them have this very interesting relationship. You're just kind of standing there like a third wheel in the door frame. Just like, uh... <laughs> Should I leave? You're, you're fine, you're fine, you're fine. Um... So we're going all the way to the city on that? No, we're going to a spaceport. Where we can steal a ship and then go. Steal a ship, huh? Oh, don't worry. Guardians do it all the time. There's plenty of ships in Russia and plenty of people to steal from. Okay. We're not far, I think. You go pretty fast on these. You lose track of time. You also lose track of how many cloaks you burn. Can it? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what do you mean? Do you really not notice me replacing your cloak every time you burn it on that thing? No, this is not the time for that conversation. Ready, new folk. Uh, do you have a name? Uh, not currently. Ghost, do you have any idea what kind of hunter they are? Once again, Cricket just does the ghost equivalent of shrugging, like, Maybe yeah. somewhere? Uh, quick. Uh, think really hard and squish your hands together. Squish my hands together. <laughs> uh, your class ability. Go ahead and roll me just flat charisma save, which should be charisma plus your save bonus. Wait, no, d20 plus your save bonus to charisma. Yeah. So. Nine and charisma is well under the saves. It's well, I think at the top number or the bottom number. The single digit number. Uh, three. All right, so nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, you squish your hands together and just think really, really hard, like to the point that you are actually straining your shoulders, <laughs> and your hand catches on fire. Oh, uh, is that supposed to happen? Cricket doesn't even blink. Turns to Anaya. Solar. <laughs> My hand is on fire. Doesn't hurt, does it? No. Solar. <laughs> <laughs> Alright then. I don't know what that means. Ah, uh, every guardian channels their light in different ways. Uh, you turn yours into pure fusion energy. You know, like the sun. Like the sun, you say? Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. You know, I think I might have an idea for a name. Oh? How does Apollo sound? Like the sun god. Yeah. Yeah. That'll work. Yeah. That'll work. I mean, it's a pretty common one, but yeah, that'll work. Apollo Alrighty. Apollo it is, then. Righty, then. Shit, what did I name the... What did I name Anaya's ghost again? Was it Ricky? I don't think you gave him a name. Uh, well, fuck it. His name's Ricky now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking note of that. Um. There we go. All right. Ricky, you done building that thing? I've been done for like five minutes. Well, off we go. Uh, hold on to your cloak. And right. as Anaya approaches this sparrow, it combusts, quite literally. Like, the damn thing lights on fire. But it isn't exploding, and it isn't smoking, either. Now, is that supposed to be happening? Yes. Don't worry. It's it's all transmog. It's fine. The only part you gotta worry about 
is the engines in the back, which is actual fire. <laughs> okay. I, like, shake my hand to get rid of the fire and climb on. Yeah, the fire quickly goes out and just diminishes in a little sparkle of white. You uncomfortably sit on the side of this piece of rebar. This is literally a flaming piece of rebar that is engineered to move. <laughs> like, this is the most back alley sparrow that ever existed. No, but it's I don't enough feel to very get safe from. On this. You're not. You're not safe whatsoever. Just hold on tight. Hope I don't flip and let's get to the cosmodrome. And from there. You drive for a while, for a couple of hours. Uh, I said, the EDZ is in Germany, so you're moving from Germany no. all the way over. I don't know where the Cosmodrome and Destiny actually is, but based on the ornament for a sleeper that says Baikonur, uh, it's a while. So Man. this thing is uncomfortable. You are riding for a very long time. But eventually, you get to the Cosmodrome, there's a spaceport, you get back to the city. Uh, I was going to open up the final encounter for the Cosmodrome res for this, but I just realized that it actually doesn't have a combat encounter either. Which means wow. I am sorry, but you do not get to fight shit for this. Damn. I'm sorry! No, it's okay. <laughs> the talking is really fun, though. Yeah. Don't worry, in the actual campaign, there will be actual fighting. Um. But. That was actually a whole ass hour. How in the fuck? No way. Yeah, because we started at like 1515 ish, and it's 1600 now. But yeah, you've made your way to the city, and as Anaya very, sh like, obviously Anaya is not used to flying planes, or at least planes like this. You fly over the Atlantic, down towards Central America, and she is not good at flying whatsoever. Like, you are holding back your stomach this entire time. You're also oh, no. fiddling with your solar energy, but you can't really do much other than light your hand on fire. Repeatedly. Sending off smoke detectors multiple times. <laughs> Which somehow still work. And they work That's enough to yell at you. Way. Eventually your ghost flies up to one of them and just scans it and turns it off. <laughs> like, we don't need that. We don't need that. And as you approach this string of mountains... You see, uh, actually no, before you even get close to the mountains, you see this massive white shape in the sky. This gargantuan city-sized orb, crisscrossed with dark scratches and almost looking burnt at the bottom. And as you crest the mountains, you see a city underneath it. A large, vaguely circular city with a massive wall ringing it. And along eight different spaces, Oh, sorry. Six different spokes along that wall are massive towers. One of them smoking, but one of them is very much so occupied. And that's the one that you pull into. There is a hangar underneath the main crest of the tower where Anaya pulls in, drops you off, and then leaves. Oh, bye, friend. <laughs> and you hear over the comes, don't worry, I'll be back. As I said, I'm just grabbing bounties from Banshee and headed out. <laughs> Alright. There's a little bit of a welcoming center in the tower. There's like a tiny little booth in the corner that literally just says New Guardians Talk Here. <laughs> and there's a frame with a di with there's a frame with a data pad. And it is basically a receptionist. <laughs> oh my god. And from DMV. It is literally just a goddamn DMV. You are handed a pamphlet. 
and sent to a waiting room. And that is your interact. That is your first interaction with the tower, and that is the conclusion of your <laughs> origin story. I'm sorry it was very anticlimactic. If you had rolled two less on one of these, you would have had a combat encounter, but you didn't. And I'm sorry about that. I'm so lucky, but unlucky at the same time. At the same time, yeah. But hey, you made it very safely to the tower, got a gun out of it, and let's just say you also got a bow as a standard issue weapon. So, yeah. You made it. And that concludes your origin story. And I'm so, as I said, I am sorry it was anticlimactic. Don't worry, there will be a lot more death and shooting and when you actually get to the campaign. Yeah, uh, this was fun. Yeah. <laughs> Still gotta talk to Kate about her doing her uh, origin module. But other than that, uh, chat, I'd like to thank you all for tuning in to this relatively brief uh, session. VOD will this will be up on YouTube. And that'll be all. Where is the button for this? Oh, God, my mouse turned off. Uh, <laughs> oh, shit, it is he chat. I wish stupid luck. Like, mine upon you, Arctic. Uh, bruh, survived. Arctic, how is your intro somehow already almost scranked the mine? I don't know when that was, but anyways. Uh, see y'all.